A couple of days ago, Joe Swinson decided to tweet out this rather stupid tweet. It actually did generate quite a bit of controversy, so rather than just sit here and talk about it, let's just have a look at it, shall we? And then we'll also look at her appearance on The Andrew Marr Show, because believe me, it's going to be a doozy. Now this is in response to a person called Francis Elliot, who I've never heard of. I assume it's probably just a very lucky random person who she decided to quote tweet. We'll just read Francis first before we actually read Joe. So Francis says this, the cast list, Johnson, Corbyn, Brown, Spencer, Milner and Cummings. Is this the moment Brexit got done? Why are they referring to all these men? Well, because they're all men, and they're all white, and apparently that's something that's relevant to Brexit for some reason. This is relevant to them as politicians, apparently. But then Joe Swinson says this, six white men stuck in the past, conspiring to wreck our future. Hashtag stop Brexit. Corbyn is a neutral, quote unquote, although I personally don't think he's very neutral either. Some people think that he's actually for Brexit and he's just playing I guess the uh, long political game, he doesn't really want to come out in favour of it as he used to do back in the day. To me, it doesn't really make sense because a lot of the Tory ministers from a long time ago when the whole Brexit vote was about to happen were open about their views, but for some reason Corbyn can't be, even though he's the leader. I personally think he's cooked, I think he has compromised his principles. I don't really buy that he's simply, you know, just hoping that Brexit happens. I think he's completely abandoned it, but... That's just my opinion. But I don't see how he's trying to conspire to wreck the future of the United Kingdom when it comes to Brexit. At least from Joel Swinson's point of view, because if anything, isn't he doing her a favour by not helping the Tories achieve Brexit? I mean, he wants to achieve Brexit on his own terms. I think he would like to do it because, well, he doesn't like the Tories. He's a Labour man, so it's a tribal thing with him. That's why he's doing it, potentially, to be charitable. But I don't understand how this in any way is bad on for Joel Swinson. I think this probably helps her because she can use this to Again, hashtag stop Brexit. As for the others, well, I guess they're all Brexiteers mostly, like Cummings is, Johnson is. They're conspiring. It's a conspiracy to wreck the future of Britain. Even though Joe Swinson is literally conspiring with the European Union to sabotage the democratic mandate of the people. Is that not conspiring to wreck the future of Britain? Well, we're stuck here in a limbo with uncertainty, which is actually causing a lot of companies to leave because they don't know whether we're staying or leaving. And also, let's not forget that we're literally wasting billions of pounds whilst we dither and delay to Cobble Johnson. Again, I have to wonder whose actions are actually conspiring to wreck our future. But again, I don't understand what these guys' race has to do with any of this or their gender. This is not something, really, that a leader of a opposition party, though not the opposition party, ought to be saying in public, because Twitter is a public place. Do you not think that maybe stuff like this doesn't help your cause? Saying things like stop Brexit, we're going to ignore the democratic mandate of the people. We are going to stop it with all our power and we're going to use your race and your gender against you. We're going to be racist and sexist to you. Please vote for us. I really don't get the optics in that. I don't see how that helps anybody get elected. I think it's crazy. And I don't understand how she thinks she's going to somehow become prime minister and gain 200 seats. I think the last time the Liberal Democrats even had anywhere close to that number of seats or gained anywhere close to it in an election was when the last time they won it, which was Lloyd George, a hundred years ago. And they weren't even called the Liberal Democrats, they were called the Liberals. That's how long ago it was, and she thinks that she can overturn this a hundred year drought, say for the coalition government from 2010, when they shared power, but were not actually the party in power. Does she honestly think that with rhetoric like this, she's going to convince working class voters, middle class voters even, upper class voters to vote for her? I don't see it. I simply don't see it. But anyway, let's go to the Andrew Marr show appearance. You very vividly described the Prime Minister and the leader of the Labour Party as two men stuck in the past just now. There was a very controversial tweet that you put up recently. Let's just look at it. Let's look at that face again. Oh, she's she's really not looking forward to this because I think she was expecting Andrew Marr to kind of softball her through this interview. But I don't think she was expected to have her tweets laid out in front of her and be called out on it. Well, I hope he calls her out anyway, but at the very least, He's trying to take the task. He's bringing it up. You're saying these things. I think it's only fair we discuss these things. Right, Mrs. Swinson? Or Miss Swinson? Miss Swinson? I don't know. We haven't got it. I beg your pardon. Oh, come on, BBC. You can't even get a single tweet. Andrew, you let me down. Seriously. She made that tweet on the 23rd of October, which means you had four days to get it. Come on, it's right there. 
This is what your TV license funds. They can't even bring a tweet up. You talked about six white men stuck in a room. That suggested to a lot of people as if you were underestimating the number of uh, British, black and Asian voters who voted for uh, Brexit and also the number of women who voted for Brexit. It sounded like you're putting down... No, uh, no, them no, down. no, no. Yes, she is. She's completely putting them down. She's ignoring that they exist. She is ignoring that, I guess you would call black and minority ethnic people actually do have these views and they're not a very small minority of these populations. It's not just the fact that she's ignoring these people. It's the fact that she's using this rhetoric in the first place. This is the type of stuff that if I said something like that, I might be put in prison for that, or I might be actually investigated by the police for this. But because Jo Swinson is an MP, and she's part of the elite, and she's considered part of an oppressed class, you know, a white woman, <laughs> you know, I know, right, guys? She can get away with these things. She can say these things because she's the right kind of person to say it. That's another thing. It's the privilege of being able to say things like this and get away with it when other people can get arrested for it. I mean, again, you've probably heard of this story. There was this man who met this trans lady online who wanted to be a porn actress. Now, he didn't know she was trans because she passes very well and she didn't tell him. When he found out, he said, sorry, I don't work with trans people. No offence. That's just not the porn I do. Sorry, can't work with you. She reports him to the police and they're investigating him for a hate crime. What's the hate crime? For having different sexual preferences. Having the wrong sexual preferences, at the very least, an investigation. Whether or not he'll actually go to jail, I don't know. I hope not. But I reckon Joe Swinson could say something like that and the police won't be investigating her anytime soon. Anyway, let's move on. Not at all. My point was about who is in the room when the decisions are being made. Well, surely Pretty Patel is part of that. She's Indian. Surely, as the Home Secretary, she would have a voice in these matters. I think cherry-picking six names, Corbyn, Cummings, Milner, etc, etc, is rather disingenuous, don't you think? White men are an important part of wow. our society. They make up about 42% of our society. Maybe in London, they're 42%. Surely it would be roughly 60% if you include the whole country, because 42% sounds more like London. I don't think they're the right statistics. But apparently, they're so important that you have to disparage them and use their race and their gender against them. For some reason, this is something that has to be used and highlighted because these are the people who just so happen to be making the decisions. Never mind that the person who got us into more of this parliamentary mess was a woman, Theresa May, a white woman. You know, she was Prime Minister, right? She's the one who came up with the Chequers deal, ended up delaying Brexit beyond the original point it was meant to start. Never mind all that, apparently it's the white men, I guess. It's just the white men's fault now, is it? So not a peep when Theresa May does it, but when Boris Johnson gets a difficulty, when Corbyn starts talking with him and doing things that politicians do, apparently it's bad because they're all white men, or at least these cherry-picked examples. But to say that you have six people in a room making a crucial decision like mm. that, and they are all from that 40% of society, that's not the but best way to get good decision-making. Politicians in this country are elected to represent their whole constituents, and the government is elected to basically represent not just the ones who voted them in, but also the people who did not. Say, for example, that I voted for Rebecca Long Bailey, who is my MP. I would expect her to represent me, not because of my race, but because I am her constituent. My interests are things that need to be represented in Parliament. Likewise, I would expect her to represent me even if I didn't vote for her because I have just as much of a right to be represented than anybody else in this constituency, whether I voted for her or not, because that's her job. Her job is not to look out for herself. Her job is not to look out for women or for men or for any particular demographic. It's just her constituency. That's what you were elected for. You seem to forget that. And for some reason, because these guys just so happen to be white and male, that's bad. Well, they're not there because they're white and male. They're there because they're the politicians that the people have elected, or at least elected to their constituencies, to do the job that they need to do. And wouldn't you be involved in some of these meetings as well? Considering that Corbyn's there, because you're the biggest Remain voice. But apparently, I guess it's okay when you do it. Versity, we Look. all know, is good for better decisions. You keep going on about representation, which is what you're implying here, but again, I guess implying that a quota of non-whites and non-males would make this better. Well, how do you know? You're basically assuming that non-white MPs have different opinions based entirely on their race. Well, how do you know that? Pretty Patel is not that much different to Boris Johnson, and she's not white. Technically got Boris Johnson's race wrong. He's got Turkish ancestry. They're not white. The idea that somehow these people would bring in different voices based purely on aesthetic things like skin colour, ethnicity, and things like that is preposterous. 
They're there because they're MPs and they're there because they're qualified to do the job. I guess I'm wondering why, why their, their colour and gender matters because Jeremy Corbyn is in that position because huge numbers of black and Asian Britain, many of them women, voted for him and wanted him to be there. He's representing them. Andrew Marr has many faults, but that is bang on the money. That's literally what I said. I have nothing more to add here. It's a representative uh, democracy. Representation matters and exactly. it matters that we don't just have people standing up for those that voted for him but that the voices of women of people of color of uh, disabled mm. people of people who have different sexual orientations are all within our house of commons the labor party literally had a blind minister ian blunkett but again this is not the representation we're talking about joe this is not why mps are elected you're talking about the social justice version of representation where people are voted on based on their race and their gender they have to represent these particular groups. You're talking about putting people in these positions because of their race and gender as opposed to their qualifications. You are not talking about parliamentary representation where an MP is elected to represent a community which includes anything from all white to all black to all Indian to melting pot communities and all sorts. And why is it important anyway to have these people? Why do you assume, why do you imply that these people would somehow do a better job because of their race or gender or disability or lack thereof a disability? What kind of society is that? What kind of representation is that? That's kind of bastardizing our representative democracy. And that, that is what a modern Britain looks like and I... Well currently United Kingdom's 80 odd percent white. That's actually something that's statistically likely to happen in a parliamentary meeting because men are more likely to go into politics and currently the country is mostly white so you'll see mostly white men doing these things and you'll also see more ethnic minority men in these positions too. That's the way it is. I can't explain why that is, it just is. But the idea that these men can't represent the whole of the UK because of the colour of their skin is ridiculous. They obviously can. Otherwise, as Andrew Marr pointed out, people like me, who are mixed race, or whatever, Bammies or Bames, whoever you want to call us, wouldn't vote for them if we didn't think they couldn't. I want to see us having the people who are making those decisions, not just uh, one group doing it on behalf of those other people, but that those are t truly drawn from the rich diversity of our country. And but why? Why is that necessary? What is it really, Joe? Because knowing me from your voting record, you're not really a progressive. You know, you're putting on the whole progressive social justice stick here, but you don't believe an ounce of it, really. Again, guys, go look up her voting record. She's basically a neoliberal. This is nothing more than a front. Joe Swinson is lying to you. Maybe she does have some prejudice towards these people. Maybe. But personally, I think she's trying to play to a particular crowd. She thinks if she says things like this, that ethnic minorities are more likely to vote Liberal Democrat, you know, the most white middle class party there is outside of the Conservatives. Hell, I think even the Conservatives actually have more people who are ethnic minorities voting for them. I don't think that should be controversial, frankly. Because that's not what you said, though, in that tweet. You're just pointing out somebody's race and agenda and saying it's a bad thing. You're saying that, oh, look, these white men, these old white men, these six white men trying to ruin this country, conspiring to ruin the country, implying that non-white men would do any better. Again, I point to Theresa May. Um, can you be a feminist and vote for Brexit? Well, that's a stupid question, yes. It was a left and right issue, it was non-partisan. Yes, you can be a feminist that voted for Brexit. I think I've actually seen a few who did. Of course you can. At the very least, even Jo Swinson gets that, yes, you can, because it's non-partisan. Even though her side have done their very best to frame it as a left or right issue, it's not. Otherwise, Corbyn wouldn't have been advocating for it for many years. Tony Benn, the father of Hillary Benn, he advocated for it and he was as left-wing as they come. And people like John Major, who's right-wing, a conservative, he's Remain. So, so you're not saying that the fact that they were men and white matters that much? Careful now, don't break the veneer, Andrew. Remember, she's trying to pitch things to Bames. Well, it matters I mean, you know, when you're... They, they are who they are. They've been chosen by people of all colours and, and genders. Well, and... I, I mean, Dominic Cummings okay. and Seamus Milne have, have not, not been so chosen by, uh, by, by any uh, mm. democratic process. Oh, yes, Seamus Milne. Is that the author? Is that the historian? But again, they weren't voted on based on the colour of their skin. They were voted for, or at the very least employed, based on their qualifications. As Andrew Ma's saying, it's relevant, but it's not relevant. It's important because more representation, because we need more voices. It's just empty rhetoric. It doesn't mean anything. You're trying to explain away an obviously racist tweet and you're failing miserably. Uh, and, you know, 
it, you know, of course, you know, people can be a feminist and have all different political views. Andrew Ma, you, you've done a wonderful job here. She's really struggling to keep up this veneer of I'm definitely an intersectional feminist, social justice warrior. Please vote for me, guys. Or... Uh, and so I'm not making okay. the point that you're suggesting I am. But you are. You are making out that it is a problem that these people just so happen to be white and male. Well, Boris Johnson technically isn't. But what I, but it is important that the people in the room making the decisions are truly mm. drawn from the public at large. But they are. They are from the majority of the population, funnily enough. So when you one person who's black, one who's Chinese, one who's Indian, one who's Pakistani, no, that's not necessary. That's not how our politics works. That's not how a British MP is chosen, and that's not how his job is meant to be. If the country was entirely white, you would be complaining, oh, this person's not working class, this person isn't middle class, this person isn't an industrialist, this person isn't, I don't know, he doesn't come from finance. You would just be finding another thing to complain about. You'd be finding some other stratum of society that they're a part of. One very quick last question. Are we going to have a general election before Christmas? Spoilers, yes we are. And that's the end of the video, guys. What else is there to say? Andrew Ma pretty much said exactly what I was going to say. The race and gender does not matter at all. Their job is not to represent one particular group of people. Their job is not to do that. Their job is to represent everybody in their constituency or the country. But as we've seen recently over the many, many years, this has become less of a thing. MPs have abandoned this. This is why you see the disconnect between Remain MPs and their constituents who voted for Brexit. They're going against that and instead going for their own interests. This is why John Perko said things about MPs. The reason why British MPs, so brilliant, I'm paraphrasing here guys, because MPs do what they believe is right, even though what they're meant to do is what the constituency, what the country thinks is right. That's what representative democracy is. Unfortunately, we don't have that anymore. But I'll just leave it there guys, and I'll see you later.